Hello everyone, my name is Zina Islam and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network at UNIS Center. Today we are having the 42nd session of our YSBC web lecture series on the topic of Amazonia Emprende Forest School, a vehicle to increase capacities for a better nature regeneration in the Amazon rainforest. We have with us our speaker today, Mr. Julio Andres Rosso, Head Director of Amazonia Emprende Forest School, Colombia. He has 15 years of experience in green business and forest conservation. He has been the top um, innovator 2021 of the World Economic Forum. We also have with us Ms. Julie Hernandez, Director of Amazonia Emprende. Our moderator today is Ms. Christina Yeager, Co-Founder and Managing Director of the UNIS Environment Hub Germany. Christina um, uh, uh, serves as a co-chair of GIZ's Prevent Waste Alliance and is a responsible leader of the BMW Foundation World Responsible Leaders Network. In 2016, she co-founded the Circular Economy and the Plastic Lab, uh, a creative uh, laboratory to keep plastics out of nature. In 2019, she founded Columbia Circular. She's an advisory board member of the Grameen Creative Lab Germany. Uh, this is going to be a very informative lecture on many important topics, so I urge you to please listen to the conversation and act upon it. Deforestation is a problem limit, not limited to the Amazon. In Bangladesh, we also have the Sundarbans to take care of, so let us be good global citizens and do good. And for this, and now I welcome Professor Mohamed Yunus for his opening remarks. Uh, Professor Yunus. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Julie, Julie, Julio and Julie. Julie is here. Good to see you. Wonderful. Uh, this is a very special occasion today. It's uh, We have been talking about environment. We're talking about Amazonia. We're talking about deforestation, uh, environment, and all these issues, which are very pressing issues. Uh, but we are at a distance. Uh, we are not there. Uh, we talk from a distance. Today, what we have done, we are taking you to exactly where the problem is, uh, right in Amazonia. And Caqueta, Amazonia, that's where uh, Julio will be talking from and Julie will be with him. Uh, they'll be talking right where their action is. Uh, so this is a connection with the Amazonia and see what they are doing, what they want to do, what is the future for it. Amazonia is not about Colombia, it's about the whole world. It's a, uh, This is our lungs. Uh, if our lungs goes wrong, we are finished. And it is going wrong. It's step by step in, in uh, big steps. And uh, this uh, Kakata, Kaketa, where they are located, they are working. This used to be the headquarter of uh, uh, guerrilla uh, war, uh, guerrilla leaders uh, who have been fighting war with the government of Colombia for the last 60 years until the peace treaty was signed. So it's, uh, it's not only about Amazonia, it's about uh, guerrilla war, what happened to the people, what happened to the forest, what is the future of this forest? Uh, do we keep our lungs uh, uh, healthy for us or we just give up and let the lungs uh, this, uh, go off uh, and uh, we go off? And this is an issue. So they are in the, uh, right there. They will tell you about what, what's going on, what needs to be done. So this is a wonderful occasion to be there with them. And I'm very happy. Uh, uh, Christina is heading UNIS Environment Center, UNIS Environment Hub. And uh, she uh, is connected and she this is a project that she supports. Uh, and uh, she will be moderating. And the floor is yours, Christina. Uh, let us have uh, the discussion going. Thank you very much. Welcome to the discussion. Thank you so much, Professor Yunus, for the, the kind welcoming words. And um, I welcome everyone uh, in the audience. Uh, my name is Christina. I'm from Yunus Environment Hub. And it's uh, a great pleasure to moderate this web lecture together with Julio and Julie, who are very dear social business entrepreneurs and, and friends uh, of us. And um, I'm really excited because um, I've been following them right from the beginning. We had several visits and it, it's really a pleasure to be able to follow the churning and the growing of, of your social business. And um, uh, you're dealing with a topic that is uh, very, very important, um, as was mentioned before, and not just for Latin America or in Colombia, where we're based, but all around the world, because um, deforestation is a global issue and the Amazon are the lungs of our earth. So anything that is happening there is basically 
affecting the global, global climate and uh, all of us sitting sitting anywhere. And um, I would like to uh, start the conversations with uh, the two of you to please uh, introduce yourselves and give us uh, an introduction to um, uh, the deforestation issue in Kakita, where you are sitting, which is the area that suffers the most of the deforestation, um, um, as, as we learned from you, um, to tell the audience a bit about what is happening there, why it is happening, and so on. Over to you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Professor Junison and everybody. Hello from Bogota. Julio is in Caquetá. I am today in, in Bogotá, the capital city of Colombia. And we are very excited about this, this uh, opportunity. Um, well, um, my name is Julie. I am co-founder of Amazonia Emprende Forest School. We are the first forest school in the, in the country. Um, and three years ago, three and a half years ago, when we purchased 30 hectares in the Amazon rainforest in, in the department of Caquetá. And he's my, my boy, Miguel, sorry. Hey, <laughs> um, we, we didn't know what, what, what was the, the port. We, we didn't have like the, the whole idea of, 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 the, of a forest school, but after being there for a while, what we have seen is that even though deforestation is a problem that affects us all, as Professor Yunus said, not only Colombia, uh, especially when we are talking about the Amazon rainforest, there is not uh, enough information about deforestation. Uh, probably the causes of deforestation are clear, but not the consequences of deforestation. And that's why we come up with the idea of creating this forest school where we can uh, teach Colombians and foreigners about the consequences of deforesting the Amazon uh, rainforest. Uh, but also to, um, to promote entrepreneurs and social businesses so we can generate incomes based on, uh, or we can generate incomes for peasants communities uh, using in a sustainable way the, the forest. Uh, that's why we create the forest school. And the third reason is because we, we believe that we need to connect with a private sector in order to tackle deforestation. Um, historically, the government has been involved in uh, fighting deforestation as well as international cooperation, but the private sector has not in, been involved. And uh, through the forest school, we try to connect entrepreneurs and private sector. Um, Julio, I give you the, the word now. No, Hello. that's right, Prof. Hello, Miguel. Hello, Professor Junos, Cristina. Thank you very much for uh, permitting us to show you all the work that we are doing here at the Forest School in Caquetá. And I have to agree with Julie. So we noticed that there is a lot of interest around the world in conservation of the Amazon rainforest. But the real thing is that there is very few knowledge. Uh, everybody wants to do things, but not so many people know how to do it well. So that's why uh, many people say or try to act around the magic word of reforestation. And here, being in the territory, we notice that we don't, uh, we, we don't, know, uh, we don't talk about reforestation we have to talk about restoration, which is the key word. And there is a very big difference between reforestation and restoration. I, I think I will have a, a, the opportunity to show you in a very short walk around here at the Forest School what the difference is. And thank you very much for, for these conversations because this allow us to share uh, the work that we are doing here in Caquetá, in the Amazon region, and also the work that the local communities are doing uh, in order to protect the forest. Thank you very much. Great, Julio. Thank you so much. And um, um, 
Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned that you wanted to show us a bit around what, what you're doing to explain us the difference between reforestation and restoration. I think it's very important because the two terms sound very similar and that everyone knows the differences. Also, what afforestation, for example, is. Maybe you can include that as well. And um, for the audience, anyone who has a question, please do post them in the chat uh, so that um, along the way we can also include uh, those questions and ask, ask them to, to Julio and Julie. So, so Julio, yeah, please go, a go ahead to, to show us what you're doing at Amazonia Brenda and tell us the difference of, of the concepts of, of restoration, reforestation, afforestation. Of course, Christina, but firstly, I would like to ask Professor Yunus uh, maybe to give us an overview. What did you feel uh, while you were here? Uh, what, were, what was your perception uh, being here, talking with my colleagues, uh, walking around through this nursery of native species? I would like to have your impressions, Professor Yunus, before starting the walk around. Professor, you are on mute or? Yeah, uh, I'm not in the discussion, so I'll not participate. It's a discussion among three of you. So I'll uh, leave you within yourself, right? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, Christina, maybe you can help us. So uh, w from the point of view of, of someone who lives in Europe, what does it feel to live, to come here to the Amazon rainforest? What is your impression, Christina? I mean, um, uh, it's the, the feeling that you get is that you feel very connected um, to uh, the environment and basically to um, uh, the uh, the roots that we have as humankind. And for me, each time, I mean, it's just been several times that I've been visiting you and um, I've been working in the environmental space for many, many years. But every time I was visiting you, I was learning something new which is something very, very enriching. And um, it's this, um, uh, yeah, also this, this drop of hope um, that uh, we have and that we want to uh, grow at UNOS Environment Hub to see that there are feasible solutions on how we can address the issue of, of deforestation and find a new path and way um, um, that is uh, helping us in turning around this this climate crisis that we are facing. Mm -hmm. That's right. So with that comment, uh, Julie, uh, could you please give us the definition of deforestation, of restoration and reforestation? And afterwards, I will give you some examples on how those definitions, those concepts, uh, can be brought to the to the, to the implementation. Okay, so reforestation, you talk about reforestation when you are, uh, uh, you have the goal to, to, to uh, uh, plant trees, so you start planting trees uh, without considering in detail all the elements that surround the trees, that's reforestation. And restoration, when you are talking about restoration, you consider the um, ecosystem services that you would like to uh, to to have to, to return or to have once again because they have been lost. Um, and if you want to restore those um, those uh, services that the nature provides in that particular ecosystem, then what we have learned in Amazonia and in the Forest School is that you need to see uh, not only the tree uh, or the or how much carbon the tree captures you also have to see other elements uh, such as the soil such as the people as a central element uh, pollinizators and other important elements uh, and and Julio will show us right now the kind of elements that we see at the forest school that's right, that's right. If we put the people in the middle of our restoration strategy, we have to consider food as the first element. 
That's why here at the Forest School, we have this laboratory where we are experimenting how to um, include food systems into a farm in the lifestyles of people who live in a farm. For instance, we have here the plantain, we have pineapples right there, we have chili pepper over there, and we have achote. And of course, these are planted in a very few or, or in a very small part of the farm so that uh, the people can grasp that food very close to the house. The farm needs to be very close to the, fa the, the house so that the people can uh, enjoy and take advantage of the, of the agricultural systems that they have. Uh, in our experience, a farm, if we consider a farm, uh, the hundred percent of the farm, more or less the food system should comprise 5% or 10% of the territory. So that's the most important thing. And we, uh, we, we here in Caqueta, Caqueta, to put you in, in a context, you can see here the main city, Florencia. This is the capital city of Caqueta. Uh, Caqueta is very far away from Bogota, from the principal cities of Colombia. And every time that it rains here in the territory, there are lots of landslides in the ways, in the highways, and that in, uh, that's an impediment in order to transport food from the main cities to this region. Professor Junos one was mentioning that Caqueta was one of the most affected territories due to the civil war that we have, the guerrillas war that we have. So, and that brought a very uh, critical consequence, which was that uh, people uh, forgot to harvest food here in the territory. If we have considerations on the impact of the war, plus the extensive livestock uh, ranching, so, so this model that was implemented here in the region, so the cows are not originally for, from this region, but the public policies in the middle of the 50s, in the last century, broke the cows here in the territory. So that uh, brought as a consequence that uh, people forgot to um, harvest food. And uh, in order to focus either on cocaine plantation or on uh, uh, having uh, cows in the territories. In Caqueta, we have 2.5 million cows, whereas uh, we are living only here 700,000 people. There are four times more cows than, pe than people in the rainforest, and that's, um, that's amazing. So, um, Food security is very important in order to balance, to balance, to balance uh, the equation. Uh, could, uh, Christina, could you please uh, tell me if you are seeing the image I'm showing? If my camera is on or not? Yes, we can. Yes, we can it's see on. it. Yes. Le yeah. Okay. So food systems is very important. Secondly, uh, we, as Julie mentioned, we need to put into consideration that a restoration strategy is not only about the trees and the carbon that the, tree, that the trees can capture from the atmosphere. It is about biodiversity. And this is a very strong message that we are sharing here at the Forest School. And we have a very big challenge, Christina and Professor Junius. We need to collect the seedlings from the forest we need to uh, uh, rescue all the species which are endangered uh, due to deforestation, and we bring them here in this mega nursery. We have more or less 80 native species here in our forest school so that we can multiply their seedlings. Uh, here we have here cacao, native cacao, we have here Juan Soco, we have here palms, 
fans are very important. And I have an, a, a, a very funny story because we talked with, a, with an enterprise which wanted to offset their carbon emissions. And they said, we want to plant trees. And we said to them, okay, we have these palms here. And they said, no, palms not, trees. And we said, but palms are trees as well. They didn't understand that. That's why we, we, we understood that we need to make a lot of teaching uh, around restoration. Uh, otherwise, the enterprises will not make smart decisions. That's the, the added value of this forest school. So, and we engage with uh, private companies. For instance, we are doing it here with Nestlé uh, and with other uh, Colombian companies. So the mega nursery is a very strong asset for us uh, because we can guarantee biodiversity of native species. Everybody thinks that there are trees in the territory and that's not true. There are trees in the forest but there are no trees being uh, harvested in mega nurseries. For instance, two weeks ago, we found it a very critical issue. And therefore, this type of connections with you, Christina, Professor Junius, are very important because we need support. Uh, we found out that in Caqueta, and Caqueta is a territory that comprises more or less 9 million hectares. Caqueta has only 17 nurseries. 17 nurseries is not enough in order to restore 9 million hectares. 17 nurseries uh, which are owned by people beyond the 60s, old people. So we are losing young people here in the territory. We have to bring young people to this type of social business. And we need, of course, to train them. We need to 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 engage them and so on and so forth and this is resources resources that are needed in this territory in order to develop the activities of the forest school well um i don't know julie if you want to add up something uh, additional about the mega nursery otherwise I'll, i will move on to the sanctuary of native peace no, I think you said it, say it all. Uh, I think we can go to the beast. Of Maybe course. just one thing yeah. from, from my side to, to compliment Julio for, for our audience, because I think it's it's really nice that you um, explained the difference between the reforestation, reforestation and restoration, that restoration is much more than just planting trees, but taking into account the entire ecosystem and conserving the, the biodiversity in that ecosystem whereas reforestation is the activity of replanting trees. And to complement the difference to afforestation, afforestation means also tree planting. And the difference is that afforestation, you plant trees on an area where there has not been a forest yet, meaning creating a new forest. And reforestation means planting trees on an area where there has been a decrease of, of plants and trees that have been taken out. So maybe just this to complement for everyone to have the, the definitions at place. And um, uh, back to you, Julio, to show us the, the next station of your activities. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that, uh, that explanation of the concepts, uh, Christina. And another thing that we understood here at the Forest School is that you can plant trees in a reforestation or a restoration uh, system. It doesn't matter. You can plant, plant trees, but after 20, day, 20 years or 30 years, what will happen with those trees if they don't have pollinators, if they don't have bees, if they, if they don't have animals surrounding the, tree, the, the forest in order to make this potential ecosystem service, which is the dispersion of the seeds, the dispersion the distribution of the pollen, the pollinization. That's why we, we, uh, we need to tell the world, we need especially the public, uh, the policy makers, but also the private sector, we need to tell that for every tree which is planted needs to be put a 
a system in order to protect the bees. That's why you, we have here the nursery very close to the sanctuary of native bees. These are the guardians of this hive. In every hive, we have more or less 5,000 bees. Um, and this is a very complex system, very fantastic system where the bees are doing their work because they are interacting with the plants. We are, they are increasing the uh, probability that the flowers of the new trees produce better, better seedlings uh, um, on time. So that's very important. And again, this is a matter of, uh, of sharing the world, of making, pay, um, of teaching the, the enterprises, because the enterprises are focused on offsetting carbon emissions, but very, very few enterprises uh, understand the importance of not only offsetting carbon emissions, but also increasing biodiversity uh, systems. I will show you while I I will uncover one of the hives. Uh, Julie, could you please complement that that uh, that message? Sorry, sorry, I was I wasn't mute. So you have seen so far the nursery. You have seen the bees. We are documenting the the processes. Uh, we have. Um, besides the, the bees and the native trees and the, and the nursery, we have also bioconstruction, uh, our, our home back there in, in Caquetá, it uh, was built with bioconstruction. Um, and the reason is, as Julio said, we tried to, we put the people in the center. So yes, bees are here. Um, so these are here. This is our our bees. Uh, this is the time of the year that we can collect uh, most of the honey. Um, Miguel here is saying that he wants a uh, honey, and this is a very very special honey because it can be eaten, of course. But um, what we are trying to do is to connect with a uh, pharmaceutical companies because um, this kind of honey has a uh, special property. It's, it's very humid. Um, it has other kind of, uh, how you say, nutrientes, Julio? Nut uh, you can help nutrients. me with the word. Nutrients. Nutrients, yeah. yes, nutrients. exactly, mm -hmm. nutrients. Um, so, so this is a very special honey from our, our native bees. Um, uh, and what we would dream is to uh, to share with the world the properties of these kind of 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 uh, bees, uh, as well as creating income for the families that uh, that that take care of the of the bees of, and the and the trees. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So if you notice at this, uh, at this point of the conversation, uh, we have shown you so far uh, three so-called, this is another new brand concept, nature-based solutions. The food system uh, project, the mega nursery of, of na native species, the sanctuary of native bees, and most important, the people so how to bring people on board private sector but also decision makers from the public sector but also local leaders people who live in the territory who have not understood that there are many many income opportunities around climate change so that's what we are teaching them so to not to be afraid of climate change but to be prepared of climate change by implementing nature-based solutions, but also by pro, uh, developing green businesses, social businesses, for instance, the honey production, achote, this is achote, which is also a very important uh, uh, fruit 
for the cosmetic and the textile sector, cacao, we have here cacao, uh, the, the, uh, here is the achote, I will show you the achote. This is a fruit of achote, you will see. I can take this out. You see that this, this is color in red. This is very, very, very useful for the textile industry, for the cosmetic industry. And we have all here in the Amazon. And people have to know that, but they have lost this culture because of the war, because of cocaine uh, production, and also because of uh, the, the extensive uh, livestock uh, ranching. No? So as I mentioned before, we have more cows here than people. So that's why we focus entirely on uh, bringing especially young people, people from the Amazon region on board so that they can open up their minds, come up with strategies, and therefore we all together, we will achieve the goal that we have, which is to restore at least 100,000 hectares in the next seven years. Look, these are some of our students who are having a, a classroom at this moment. These are leaders, leaders of the territory. Fantastic, Julio. Thank you so much for, for showing us all around. Uh, it's really exciting to see uh, this all uh, in life. Um, since Amazonia and Brenda is a social business, um, maybe you can elaborate a bit on your business model so people understand how you are generating income and financing the fantastic activities that you're implementing in terms of the nature-based solutions and the educational programs. Can you touch up on that a bit? Mm -hmm. Julie, you are the yes. yeah. head manager of the social <laughs> business model. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's a very uh, good question and a lot of people from the territory ask us about that uh, because it's not very usual that people from Bogota, Julio and I come from Bogota, the capital city of Colombia, move to a territory as Caquetá. Usually it works the other way around. People from the Amazon rainforest, from the departments of the Amazon, they go to the to the to to Bogota. Um, so our incomes comes, the first one is from education. Um, we, um, edu we, we have boot camps uh, for um, young leaders from the territory, from the Amazon. We also have boot camps from, uh, and for entrepreneurs, uh, social businesses or so people, very young people, especially who are who has some ideas, but they go to the forest school to get inspired. Um, uh, so that's like the, our second target. And the third one is for, uh, for uh, businesses leaders uh, who have the capacity to take decisions in their own companies. Uh, and they would like to understand uh, in which way they can create more impact, not only to the environment, but also social impact. So we implement boot camps and other kinds of, of methodologies to, um, to, to teach them about uh, restoration and how to, to generate impact and, and income. Um, the second one, it's uh, with companies that uh, want to compensate their, their footprint uh, so we have, uh, so far, we have uh, implement restoration processes and compensation, voluntarily compensation processes in the forest schools in our 30 hectares. Um, we are aiming to uh, scale up these uh, uh, restoration processes by means of, of voluntary and on mandatory compensations. Uh, not only in our 30 hectares, but uh, in our neighbors' uh, lands, uh, so we can create more, more impact. Um, and the third source of, of income comes from uh, projects that we have with international cooperation. 
uh, or donations that we receive from from organizations, especially international organizations that that support our job. Those are the third um, sources of income of the Forest School. Mm -hmm. no, and, and we so, are very opti optimistic, uh, Christine mm -hmm. and Professor Junus, because uh, especially in the last two years, we have noticed that there is a new kind of leadership among enterprises, uh, especially women working on big enterprises who make decisions uh, towards impact. And we are very optimistic because we have conversations about restoring 10,000 hectares, 30,000 hectares with the people, with the communities. And this is an opportunity to make sure that money flows into the territory by restoring the landscapes, the farms of the people you saw before, I showed you before. Uh, we dream of uh, having boot camps with universities, with international universities, uh, European universities. We know, we know, and we are aware of this environmental movement um, um, uh, among the young people in Europe and the USA, um, and people in who Asia want to well. know where in Asia. In Asia as well. So young people who want to be part of the solution not only by posting in social media, but by being here, knowing what's really going on, what you did. So your visit was very significant for us. Uh, uh, and that's why we, we are prepared to receive people from abroad so that we can share all that knowledge in the bootcamp. So this is a project that we are totally convinced that we can partner with uh, the Juno Center uh, so that more, more, more people come over to the Amazon rainforest to, to be active part of the solution. Fantastic, fantastic, Julian, Julie. So um, if I want to participate in a boot camp, where can I find the information? Where do I go to, to look when the next boot camp is? You have a website, you can... your social media? Yes, we have, a, we have a website. So you can, you, you will find our emails there. Um, also, you can reach us by LinkedIn. We use LinkedIn. So Julio's LinkedIn or my LinkedIn. Or also, we have one of Amazon Emprende. You can contact us. Um, we have different kind of, of boot camps. Uh, when people come from far away, they would like to stay uh, um, in the project for at least one week, two weeks. We can we can make that happen. Or... Um, boot camps of three, two, three days uh, where we are able to see what happens at the forest school, but we also go outside the forest school and we talk with some other allies of the territory. So you can go back home inspired and, and with a clear idea of what you can do uh, to uh, uh, support the restoration of the Amazon rainforest. Yes. Fantastic. All right. So um, uh, everyone, please go to Amazon Emprende either on the website or on LinkedIn to find uh, Julie and Julia for more information on the boot camps and, and what they are doing. And what would you recommend to uh, others who want to join your efforts? Um, maybe aside of the boot camps, how can every one of us um, contribute to the uh, um, uh, to stopping the deforestation of the Amazon? Uh -huh. That's a very, very good, and I think the most important question, Christina. Uh, the first thing is that people need to get informed because, of course, people want to be part of the, of the solution, but we are noticing that this willingness to be part of the solution without information, without knowledge, is a... Uh, uh, for instance... So this is causing many rebounds effects. Big, uh, for instance, uh, we 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 notice that there is a project receiving money from very very uh, good people. I, I I would say good people 
uh, from abroad who send money for a reforestation activity in in a neighbor landscape here in the Amazon rainforest. But the plant, but the trees which were planted were not native trees. So, a good intention becomes a bad effect in terms of biodiversity. That's why ne people need to be informed and be aware of what they are doing so that the good intentions can be reflected in good impacts. Great advice. Anything else from Julie from you to add? Um, I think always to, but I think that's to, to check the, to try to, to be very conscious on, on the products that you are consuming, what you are purchasing. Uh, but I think we we have, a, I mean, in, in, in Europe, what I have seen is that there is already a conscious a, around uh, what what you purchase, the origin of the products that you are that you are consuming. Uh, but I think what what Julio said is that it's the most important to, if you want to to donate, for example, to a project in the Amazon rainforest to restore the Amazon, uh, uh, ask questions about the trees. Uh, raise questions about where the seedlings come from. Um, if in the process of, of if, if the nurseries are communitary nurseries or if they belong only to, to a group of people. So those kind of questions um, will help you to make better decisions. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, it has been a lovely conversation and I could continue continue listening to your stories um, um, in order to close I would like since you mentioned and stressed so many times that it's so important that we educate ourselves I would like for the both of you to tell me what is the key message that you want the audience to take away and tell others today oh a tricky tricky question but I will, I will, I will say something uh, very simple but significant at the same time. You cannot take care of something that you don't know. So therefore, come over to the Amazon rainforest to get in touch with the reality, and I will be sure uh, that after your visit, you will be uh, feel more committed to be part of the solution. Right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I can confirm that. Yeah, Julie, and you? Well, but for me, it's something that that I that I learned at at the at the forest school and by talking to to people from the territory, is that, uh, as as Julio said uh, a while ago, uh, in the Amazon rainforest we have trees. That's true, but we don't have seedlings. We don't have seeds. Uh, to restore the rainforest and I think that's something shocking I mean if we even though even if we have all the the money available even if we have all the people available and the capacities and the technology we still need to find the seeds and to grow the seeds I think that's something really amazing because we I mean we, as a world we go very very uh, the the development of new technologies it's 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 overwhelming, uh, but still a tree is a tree and it needs a processes, so we really need to start focusing on the seeds. Uh, so for me it would be very nice that people who are joining this this webinar goes with that idea that we we need to focus on seeds. Um, it's a very small part of the whole process, but I think it's the most important part together with people in the whole process of restoring the Amazon rainforest. Fantastic. Right. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. I think this was a, an amazing and powerful last statement uh, to, to close the lecture today. And not just one thing to take away, but also as a challenge for everyone, right? That this is so crucial that we need um, more seedlings and we need the technical know-how and the resources in order to create them to basically uh, save the Amazon rainforest. So um, uh, we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll, you have our full commitment on helping you on uh, 
working on that. And uh, please continue the fantastic work that you are doing and inspiring others so that we can grow a global community of ambassadors around this topic and bring together a network of uh, the friends of the Amazon, of partners that um, we can find the collaborative solutions um, for the situation. Thank you so much for your time, for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights with us. Um, all the best to you. See you soon. Thank See you, you soon. very much. Thank you Christina. very much. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina, Julio, Julie. Yeah, this has been a great conversation. Uh, thank you, thank you, um, Julio, for showing us around. Um, I really felt I was back there again in Kakata. I think from this conversation, one thing I uh, take away is, you know, the importance of awareness to be to know the problems that are happening and um, the solutions that always might not be the obvious one. You know, as he said, you, you have to plant the trees or plants that are suitable for that environment and not just any. And I think your this lecture session um, uh, serves that purpose exactly, you know, to create awareness, not only are people watching this video live now but this will be on our social media where you, you can watch this as many times as you want you can share it with your friends and family so they can also know you know the problems happening in far amazon region like it's a long flight from bangladesh uh, but everywhere and even bangladesh we have similar problems of deforestation any part of the world where it's this greenery forest they are being destroyed by human greed so i'm sure every country is facing this pop, uh, problem and probably the solution in whichever way it comes will be very similar so i think awareness most important and um, uh, these uh, video recordings of our sessions will also be shared with universities our ysbcs and that's i think a really great way to create awareness at the start you know students young people at school if we can start creating awareness at the absolute um, you know basic level i think that will go a long way so thank you very very much for um, helping us do that uh, the, your message will be carried all over the world and shared many times. And I hope um, the impact will not only be in Amazon, but all over the world. So thank you very, very much. A huge round of applause for all of you, three of you, uh, for doing today's session. Uh, we hope to continue this relationship and have you in many of our events, um, you know, live and online. And um, again, this is just the beginning and we look forward to many more great things in the future. So thank you thank very you. much. And uh, now I kindly request the tech team to show up a slide of our upcoming events, um, which you will see now. And uh, till then, till our next lecture happens, um, bye bye to everyone. Thank you. Uh, bye -bye. Team, you play Thank, you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.